Hi, my name is Asif Q. Uh, I'm a percussionist um, who specializes in Middle Eastern percussion. I've been drumming for a number of years now. Um, I've created uh, quite a few groups throughout the whole of the UK, uh, from Scotland all the way down to the south coast of, uh, of England. I'm also part of a uh, band uh, based in the UK called The Nomads. Uh, and we fuse various genres of uh, music and rhythm uh, from Irish to American blues, obviously to, across to the Middle East, um, um, to, to, to make our music. Um, I've also uh, taught at many of the uh, Middle Eastern uh, dance and music festivals uh, throughout the UK. The following sets of videos um, are going to look into Middle Eastern percussion, obviously and uh, looking into the three main percussion instruments that uh, are used to, um, to play uh, the music and rhythm. Um, we will concentrate on just one of them called the darbuka, which I'll show you a little bit later on, and um, how it is played. Uh, we will look into uh, not only rhythm, we will look into, firstly, the popular rhythms that are played throughout the Middle East. Also then looking into unusual odd-timed rhythms uh, that you find uh, in, in this region. Um, and also um, how to add flavour into your drumming, uh, not only in rhythm, but also soloing on top of rhythm. Um, I look forward to, uh, to seeing you uh, in the future and I hope you enjoy the videos. Thanks very much. So, the three main types of uh, percussion instrument in Middle Eastern music. The first one is a frame drum, okay? And uh, this one here, which we call a duff, okay? This is a deep shell duff, deep shell as in the, 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 the depth of the shell here. Frame drums come in various different forms, sizes, names, etc., etc., uh, throughout the whole of the world. Um, so you have the, the, the shamanic uh, Native American drums. You have the, um, the Baran from, from Ireland. Um, from Persia, you have, uh, and, and Turkey, you have one called the Tar, um, which is a, a, a thinner shelled one, and they tend to be larger in, in diameter. In Persia, they sometimes have chains on the back, uh, and there's a shaking technique that you use and adds a little bit of a, uh, a shaky sound uh, when it's played. Um, also in Morocco and, and, and North Africa, um, there's a, a frame drum called the bendir, and the bendir uh, has a snare on the back, which adds a little bit of a zzz on the back of a, uh, to the sound of, uh, of the drum. So for, but for our purposes, uh, I want to show you this one, which is called a duff, and it's only played single-handedly. Uh, in the other countries, you use various... Um, Beaters, um, but also uh, in those countries it's played uh, double-handedly, like this on your on your on your lap, or like this um, with, with with two hands. But for, for our purposes, we're going to play single-handedly, or I'm going to show you uh, how the duff is played single-handedly. So it's played with our dominant hand and rested on our non-dominant. So you can see there's a cutout here. And this cutout, cutout is placed on our non-dominant hand. So it's just resting there. So you can see my thumb, and my thumb now grabs the wooden frame, okay? So it's just resting there. I could take my thumb off, and my hand just cradles the drum, and it's quite well balanced once you get used to how, where the balance point is on the drum, okay? So, say, there's three main hits that we play on this style of drum. Um, the first one is our bass sound, and it's played with, with this squidgy part of our hand and the flat of the hand here, 
our fingers, okay? So the squidgy part goes on this edge and you hit and bounce back. You can hear the bass sound. Sounds absolutely beautiful, okay? This allows, by bouncing off, allows the drum head to vibrate. Our next sound, actually, we want it to be a closed sound and closed in the sense that we want to stop the drum head from vibrating. And this is the same sort of movement, but this time, instead of using our, our hand, the flat of that hand, we just use the pads, not the tips, but the pads of these fingers. So this is our bass sound, and this is our sucker or slap sound, okay? And it's an accented sound, okay? So this is our bass, and this is the slap, okay? The next sound is used as a substitute or vice versa for our slap, which is a tech sound. I'm using my middle finger and just the first knuckle. Yeah, so that, that first knuckle is again on this edge here. So, yeah. And this one does bounce off. So we want the drum head to vibrate. Okay, so we have three main sounds. So we have a bass or doom. Sucker or slap, tech. So doom, slap, tech. And then doom, slap, tech. I'm going into a bit of a waltz there. Um, so those are our sounds that are played on this deep shell duff uh, from the Middle East. And um, like I say, this is a very, very important instrument in Middle Eastern percussion. It's important because the players that play this, he or she is in charge of the tempo and keeps the tempo of the music going throughout playing with other musicians uh, or just playing for the, for the other percussionists. And it's the other percussionists that actually are listening out and watching the diff player to see where they are in each particular part of the rhythm to help keep their timing and it keeps everyone's timing. Okay, because say these are pretty big hefty drums so they can be heard um, over and, and, and on top of um, uh, stringed instruments uh, or other types of instruments and also these percussion, the other percussion instruments that I'm going to show you. So this is a very, very important instrument uh, in Middle Eastern percussion. Okay. The next drum I'm going to show you is our, it's called the Darbuka. Um, it has many different names. Um, it's a goblet-shaped drum, which you find in many, many different parts of, uh, of the world. And traditionally, they used to be made from clay, yeah, terracotta, and also the skins were fish, with fish skin. Um, unfortunately, I have one of these drums, but I can hardly play it. I have to put a lamp inside to to heat the skin up because obviously living and, uh, and working in um, the UK uh, and also Italy now, um, the, the, we can have a, a very damp climate, which means that the, the skins, uh, it's very difficult to keep tension on the skin. These ones now are generally made from aluminium cast, uh, covered very beautifully with mosaics and also with plastic heads. Uh, this head, although it looks like a skin, it's not. It's a plastic one. And this helps to, um, to keep the tension on the drum and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's tuned using these, these bolts that you see around. This drum is unusual in the sense that it's played on our lap. Um, and uh, it's played with our non-dominant hand on top and our dominant hand to the side. So it's sort of like a, like a three, or six, uh, three or nine o'clock uh, court played in quarters, which, whichever way you're looking at it. Again, this, but this one, in comparison with the Duff, this one has many, many different sounds. Uh, we're going to look into uh, three of, uh, of the basic sounds initially in the videos, um, and also how to play them. And it's this instrument that we're going to look mostly into throughout the whole of these set, the sets of videos that, which, which follow this one. Uh, we could spend a long time looking into uh, various techniques and uh, playability of the different diffs and frame drums that you get. And also in, in uh, another instrument, which is just here, called the Rick, uh, which I'm going to show you in just a second. 
but it's this one that we're going we're gonna to be looking mostly into, okay? Using the three sounds that I've already showed you on the diff, okay? So the next instrument that I wanted to show you is called a rick, okay? So I'm going to use the swear word here. It's, uh, it's a headed tambourine, okay? I shouldn't really say that, but I did. Um, so again, this one, um, this one I have here is a wooden framed one with a, with a fish skin. Again, it's very, very difficult to keep in tune. So it's played with our fingers generally, using similar uh, names of sounds. So our bass sound, our tech sound, our slap sound. We, all, we also use um, the, the zills or the cymbals on the side, on the side of this, uh, of this uh, rick. Okay, so this is a, a wooden frame with a skin, but I also have a, um, a tunable one, which is made from aluminium and, um, and uh, a plastic head, which uh, I don't have to worry about the, the tension on the skin. It keeps this tension. So again, it has a different sound. It has more of a, how can I say, a, a higher sound, a comparison with the, the skinned one, the skinned instruments if you play skinned percussion have a warmer sound uh, and uh, are very nice so again we have our bass our slap our tech but also our tech is there and it's played both handed and again similarly to the the duff it's placed in our non-dominant hand okay so i normally make like a, a, a u shape yeah, with my hand here, and inside that U, resting on the side of, of, of the finger here, I place the rick, okay? And you can see from behind, I have my thumb free, and that actually clasps the zills on the back, so you can see that I'm actually touching and clasping. So I'm creating a, like a lock with these fingers, and this finger is actually on the edge, not on the skin. Yeah, so it's actually on the edge, so it's that there. It's, I also use this finger to hit the edge, so I've got a clamping mechanism there to actually hold the rick in place. It leaves this finger free to also play the sound, and this hand also to play. Yeah, to play to play the sounds. Um, this one in the hierarchy of uh, Middle Eastern percussion. Uh, it goes from the diff, which is, it goes from the diff to the darabuka, to the top of the rank, the rig. Reason being is if you make a mistake on this one, everyone will hear you. So your competence level has to be really, really high uh, to play this uh, because, again, it's, you can hear it because it's so high in sound. Uh, you'll hear it uh, over and above all the other instruments. Uh, and so therefore, if you make a mistake, you're also heard. So in terms of the hierarchy, um, this is the top of the run, then it's the darbuka, and then it's the duff. But actually, it's the other way around in importance of uh, percussion, um, because it's the duff that keeps the tempo, and it's these two that are adding the flavour and highlighting rhythm in and out of rhythm. So again, those are the three basic Arabic instruments. So how do we play the darbuka? The darbuka is played on our lap. Um, so I'm going to pick up the, the drum and I'm going to place it over my non-dominant leg. I'm right-handed, so it goes over my left leg. And the edge of it is just rested on my right leg. I bring my legs in a little bit, so if I let go of the drum, it's in place without me having to uh, hold it in position, okay? So my arm, my non-dominant arm, in my case, my left arm is then placed to the side of the drum, and then my hand rests at round about 12 o'clock, okay? Try never, not don't try, do never put your elbow on top of the drum. There's a little nerve in between these two bones here on the elbow, okay? And you put any sort of pressure, long-term pressure on them, 
and you'll start to get a tingling sensation uh, in your arm. And that's what you don't want in your left arm especially, okay? Um, so it's placed on the side. And again, this just sort of like just tucks the drum in and again, helps to hold it in position. It sometimes helps to raise your left leg. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do that. So you can either raise the foot and place the back of the heel on the leg of the chair. Uh, it raises this leg and it helps to keep that in position. Alternatively, you can use a yoga block underneath that foot or a guitar footstool, etc., just to raise that uh, leg to help keep the drum in position without it moving. We sit quite upright as well. So don't try and sit over your drum and slouched, etc., etc., because uh, one, it'll create tension, and two, it'll start to hurt and start to hurt your back and your shoulders. So we try and keep as upright as possible, okay? So our three main hits um, that we're going to look into um, to play these Middle Eastern rhythms. Um, our first sound is our bass sound. Um, it's called a doom, and it's played with the flat of the hand from our squidgy part upwards. So it's all of this part of the hand here, okay? This squidgy part rests on this edge of the drum here. So if I actually put my thumb around the edge and put my hand in, it should rest there. Yeah, so you can take the thumb away now. Uh, and so it's played with the flat of the hand here, okay? And it bounces straight back off. I'm leading with the wrist. And then flicking so I've got this sort of like flicking motion happening here so it's back out our finish to the hit is in and out so it doesn't finish here otherwise we get a really dead close sound we want a nice open sound here okay similarly we have a high sound which is our tech sound which is played on the edge of the drum here, and it's played with our middle finger, okay? So our middle finger and just the first knuckle, and our first knuckle hits this edge. You'll see with me, I spread my fingers. Now, if you want to start off and learning how to play uh, from the beginning, you can go together, apart, together, apart, yeah? But what I normally tell my students is if you keep this hand together for both of these hits, initially, you don't have to think about trying to spread your fingers because there's a lot of things to think about when you're first learning, okay? The spread will happen naturally, okay? So, again, we are leading, it's the same motion, leading with the wrist, yeah, and flicking and back out again. So our, our finish is out, okay? And with both these hits, we're thinking our drum is really, really hot and we can hardly touch the drum. So you're trying to flick out as quick as you can. So we've got two sounds. So we have our doom and then a tech. And then boom, tech, doom, tech, okay? Our next, because this hand is feeling a little bit left out, our next hit is called a car. Okay, so our doom is spelled D-O-U-M and our tech is T-A-T-E-K and then now our car, K-A, car, is played with our ring finger on our non-dominant hand. It's one of the hardest hits to, to learn. So don't be too frustrated with yourselves if you don't get a sound initially. Um, it will come over time as this finger really starts to, to get a little bit more uh, practice, okay? So it's played with our ring finger and then again, the first knuckle of our ring finger. So that first knuckle hits this edge here, okay? So initially, I'm going to show you a little bit of movement that we can do to get this fired up, to get this, um, this ring finger fired up. So it's going to be just played and bounced off with that ring finger, okay? just bounces off and now I'm going to grab, grab, grab and have a little bit of movement from the wrists with the grab. Yeah, 
grab, grab. And again, it's led with that wrist. If I've lifted, I just drop. Lift, drop, grab. Lift, drop, grab. Okay? So in slow motion, what's happening is I'm lifting, I'm throwing from the wrist, this hand is opening up and I'm going down and, and here I'm lifting back up so I get the hit on the way back up. So this is the slow motion variation of what's happening. So, okay. So the power again is away from the drum. I'm also now lifting from the elbow. Okay, so if I'm lift here, okay, this is our car. Lift, drop, grab. Lift, drop, grab up, okay? Again, this is one I spent weeks just sitting there doing this to get the sound. I'm still learning how to play all of these sounds, okay? So take your time. Don't get too frustrated. Maybe initially go for coordination, and then you can think about the quality of sound. We also try not to, in any of these motions, do any twisting variations to try and get the sound a little bit this sort of thing that will really really start to hurt you get tennis elbow rsi okay um, you see some some techniques which is a turkish technique where the you see that the 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 wrists are turning it's not the primary powering so, um, source of the of the hit the wrist moves as a secondary motion to the fingers hitting. Yeah, I'm not powering that from the wrist. It's powered from the fingers. And the wrist is coming along for the ride, if you see what I mean. Okay, so I don't teach this Tur Turkish style. I teach the Middle Eastern style, but you see some of the Turkish drummers. Uh, and some of the Middle Eastern drummers play like this. Yeah, so be careful not to do this twisting motion because it will start to hurt your, your, your hands uh, and your elbows, okay? So we have three main sounds. We have a, a doom, tech, ka, and then a doom, tech. We're going to play a little bit of a waltz. Doom, tech, ka. So one, two, three, and one, two, Three, verbalizing these hits really, really helps to make connections with your, um, with your brain and your hands, okay? So, init so initially, so say to yourself, so say, doom, tech, ka, and doom, tech, ka, and doom, tech, ka, and doom, tech, ka, doom, tech, ka, last one, tech, ka. It really makes this connection from here to your hands, okay? So, after some time, if you're saying in your head, doom, your hands will do that, tech, ka, yeah? It's like an instinctive thing. You're trying to build up this thing which is called muscle memory, okay? So, little exercises that we can be doing to start off to try and get our coordination a little bit better. So, we're going to do a hand-over-hand -hand technique, okay? Which is... One one hand hits and comes away, the other one comes down. So you could fit, imagine if there's a pulley here and this is like going up and down like this. Do you know what I mean? So it's going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Okay? So we're going to do tech, ka, tech, ka, tech, ka, tech, ka, tech, ka, tech, ka. As relaxed as possible. We're not playing tennis where we're using arms, we're doing badminton, where we're using wrists. A little bit like, um, if you can imagine, we'll play two more, so it goes one, two, okay? Imagine a T-Rex, a T-Rex is like this, okay? T-Rex drumming, a speciality, okay? So the T-Rex is like this, so you're drumming like this, but we're doing it with a little bit more, T-Rex drumming with style, you could say. So the power, everything comes from the wrist, so you're nicely relaxed, okay? If you're not relaxed, you will never be able to get faster um, later on as your, as, your, as your playing gets better. So again, we're going to go from tech, car. So after four, so we're going to go one, two, 
three, four, and tech, ka, tech, ka, tech, ka, tech, ka. We're going to speed up slightly. Tech, ka, 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 one, two, three, four. Slightly faster. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Go as fast as you can. Three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? So, this is a practice you can do. As soon as you start to get a little bit of inconsistency between the hits, because they need to be even the spaces in between, as soon as you get a little bit inconsistent, slow it back down again and try and build up that speed. Okay? Now we're going to try and do waltz in a slightly different way in order to try and get this hand, this car hand, yeah, into action. Yeah, because we need to get this one into action because this is the hardest hit to play. So we're going to do alternates in threes and our ones are going to be a doom or a tech so we're going to go one two three tech two three doom ka ka tech ka ka doom ka ka tech ka ka one two three one two three one two three one two three doom ka ka Speed up a little bit. Tech, ka, ka, doom, ka, ka, tech. Doom, ka, ka, tech, ka, ka, doom, ka, ka, tech, ka, ka, doom, ka, ka, tech, ka, ka, doom, ka, ka. Doom, ka, ka, tech, ka, ka, doom, ka, ka, tech, ka, ka, doom, ka, ka, tech, ka, ka, doom, ka, ka. Okay, so again, take it very, very slowly, build up this speed, build up your stamina. Yeah, as soon as you start to get a little bit inconsistency between the rhythms, between the, uh, the, the spaces, start to get a little bit inconsistent. Yeah, slow it back down until you just become consistent and then try and speed back up again. The next thing I want to show you is um, a way of playing percussion. Percussion basically, when you play, is a hand over hand technique. Okay? No matter what percussion you're playing, it's hand over hand. Depending what sound you make from each hand or what instrument you play, if you're using sticks, yeah, you create a rhythm within there. Okay? So, for the case of the Darbuka, this is called the running method of, 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 uh, of playing uh, Middle Eastern rhythm. We're going to start off with techers on a count of eight. So it goes one, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and teka, teka, ka, teka, 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 teka. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two. Next time around, we're going to hit a doom on one. Six and seven and eight and doom. Two, three, four, five, six and seven and eight and doom. Two, one and three this time, dooms. Five and six and seven and eight and doom. Two, three, four, five and one, three and five, seven and eight and one. Two, three, four, five. Six and seven and eight and one, two, three, four, five and six and one, three, five and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it goes dum ka teka, dum ka teka, dum ka teka, ka teka, dum ka teka, dum ka teka, dum ka teka, dum. I'm going to accent one of those texts. Accenting means I'm going to hit it slightly louder. 
if you can't hit it louder, soften everything else up. I'm just softening everything else up. So the verbalization goes dum ka tek ka dum ka tek 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 I'm going to speed up slightly tek dum ka tek ka dum ka tek ka dum ka tek ka ka tek don't forget that car Speed up slightly, very slowly. That was our first rhythm uh, played, although we speeded up towards the end, obviously. If you're not uh, ready for that speed yet, stick with the slower variation and start off with these tekkas. Yeah, then add alternating dooms. This car is always hitting. Okay. Then accent the second tech. One, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one. If I play the basic, one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and so our dominant hand is always playing this. One, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one. Two and one, two. Now we're going to add in, add the car in. And now we're going to slightly speed up. And then we're going to gradually speed up. We might get to a fast area, uh, fast speed. And even if I take my car hand away, if I take my car hand away now, this hand is always doing this. This rhythm is a falahi. I'm just gonna speed it up a little bit more. Okay, I'm oh, sorry, I played a little bit of fancy stuff at the end there, but say we'll move on to that sort of stuff. So that was our a running method of playing rhythm. You can play all these Arabic rhythms uh, using this method. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we'll be looking in the next video at two four count rhythms. This one was a two four count rhythm, as in it lasts for a count of two. Thank you very much for joining me.